morning and a very warm welcome to your English news package with radio and to television Tonga for the hour. Making headlines, gas prices predicted to keep increasing in the future. Tongan community in New Zealand believes parents should spend more time with their children to prevent them from joining gang members. And the Tonga Meteorological recorded today is the shortest day of the year. We'll have these and more stories later on in the bulletin together with sports to wrap up with the latest weather update. Now with the news in details. The new LPG gas prices are again increasing, which was effective yesterday. The two newest recorded the most expensive gas price, which they will have to pay 99 per anga and 1170 for 14 kg of LPG. Bye for with the details. In an interview with the Secretary of the Consumer Affairs Division, who is also the Deputy CEO of the Ministry of Trade and Economic Development, Sandra Di Fifita says, this is one of the highest increase they've recorded in prices of LPG gas since last year, as the highest they've recorded was in February 2014. And there are key factors contributing to the increase, including the crisis between Ukraine and Russia, which has an impact on the prices. The price of buying LPG gas from overseas is around $970 US per tonne. The Deputy CEO of Ministry of Trade and Economic Development, Sandra D. Fifita, says the increases are for Tongatapu from 4 paanga and 78 seniti to 5 paanga and 29 seniti, which increase with 51 seniti. In Vava'u, from 4 paanga and 83 seniti to 5 paanga and 35 seniti, which increase with 52 seniti. In Habai, from 5 paanga and 96 seniti to 6 paanga and 47 seniti, which increase by 51 seniti. In Ewa, from 5 paanga and 82 seniti to 6 paanga and 33 seniti, which increase by 51 seniti. And the two newest from 7 paanga and 12 seniti to 7 paanga and 64 seniti, an increase by 51 seniti per kilo. Sandra Di Fifita adds they predicted that the new LPG gas prices will still increase in the future, according to the market. At the same time, the freight of LPG gas imported to Tonga is more expensive, with also our currency is very low, and these factors combined will keep the prices of LPG gas going up. At the moment, there is no specific time on when the LPG gas prices will decrease, but due to the prices of the market worldwide, we'll keep seeing the prices increasing. However, Sanjay D. Fifita urges the public to use the LPG gas more wisely, as it is one of the most essential needs at home. Vaifanoto Bola for Radio and Television Tonga News. The Commonwealth Women's Forum, part of the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting 2022, was opened yesterday at the Serena Hotel in Kigali, Rwanda, by the Commonwealth Secretary General, Right Honourable Patricia Scotland QC. Tonga was represented by the Minister for Foreign Affairs and Tourism, Honourable Fikita Malua Utoikamanu, and the King's High Commissioner to the United Kingdom. Honorable Fanny Tupovava Otuivakano. Issues being discussed at the Women's Forum include gender and climate change, interactions and opportunities for progress, addressing the barriers to gender equality and women empowerment accountability for gender equality and women's empowerment, human capital development, building girls' leaders of tomorrow and peace in the Commonwealth, women's engagement in peace and security. Commonwealth Secretary General, the Right Honourable Patricia Scotland QC, said the meeting this week has come at a time when the world was facing more than just one challenge. She adds that since the last time the Commonwealth family came together for Commonwealth Heads of Government Meeting or CHOGM in 2018, the onset of COVID-19, new and ongoing conflicts and the accelerated impacts of climate change have fundamentally altered the global landscape and tested their resilience. That's why with eight years to go until the Sustainable Development Goals and Game, leaders and Commonwealth heads of government meeting are committed to harnessing lessons learned, working together and taking inspiration from the innovation solutions that we've seen 
emerged over the past few years, this succession of events has changed lives, livelihoods, communities, and economies. They know that in time of crisis, the poor and most vulnerable are disproportionately affected. Many development gains, likewise, have been thrown off track, while others have regressed. The Women's Forum completed today. Tongan in New Zealand, who participated in the Forum meeting last week, believes that parents should spend more time with their children to prevent them from joining gang members. This follows the recent gang violence and shootings in the country which Tongan youths were involved. This was the result of a one-day fono of the Tongan community held at Mangele Central Community Hall where more than 50 people participated in the consultation, including church leaders, leaders in communities and government representatives. Speaking to radio and television Tongan News, the Secretary of Akiheuho, Aotearoa Tongan Health Workers Association, Bagilao Manase Lua, says that the aim of this whanau was to have a conversation together as a one whole family to call for peace and for gang shootings and violence to stop ahead of the Mate Matonga versus Kiwis game on the 25th of June. They hope that these problems will not affect the excitement of Tongan people cheering and supporting for the Mate Matonga team on Saturday. In particular, we had two individuals who lived the gang life, um, you know, who have been in prison for uh, murder, who shared their story of what happened to them, uh, why their lives, um, you know, were changed, and the things that um, that impacted on them that, that that kind of forced them into the life that they um, they, le they led. So they shared some of that uh, knowledge and. Um, it was fantastic to hear them um, and for them to uh, share with us as a community uh, in this, uh, this this conversation that we're having. Uh, and the good news is that last week we heard that um, through media accounts that there is a truce in place. There have been meetings held behind closed doors with the gang leaders involved and the police and other community uh, leaders apparently. And there is a truce, so that's good news. Um, however, we also as a community wanted to do our part and to call a meeting of our own to also look at the underlying issues that cause gangs uh, to be uh, a, a part of this, um, the, the pathways that our young people follow. And we wanted to ensure that we have a conversation as a community. And so this is the beginning of uh, many conversations. Uh, we're not going to solve the problem in one meeting, but we want to hold, our, um, hold a uh, a series of, of Talanoa, but also to have practical things come out of this as well. So it was a good meeting. Uh, we, we had a, a really good foundation for building from here. Bagilao Manase Lua hopes the Mate Matonga team will have a good game this Saturday. The Tongan community in New Zealand were overjoyed with the arrival of the Mate Matonga team in Auckland, in New Zealand, yesterday afternoon. Videos and pictures are going viral on social media showing the excitement of the team as they are proud and happy to represent the Kingdom of Tonga in Rugby League and are looking forward to the test match. The Tongan community in New Zealand has decorated their houses and vehicles with Tongan flags, also with red and white drapes. The Prime Minister Huakav Miliku says on a live video he is elated and grateful to witness Tonga's community in New Zealand being supportive of the Matema Tonga team. He adds, even though he will not be in New Zealand during the test match against New Zealand's team, but he hopes for a good game for the boys. Meanwhile, here in Tonga, a float parade will be held on Friday afternoon by the Ministry of Internal Affairs and will not only focus on the Matema Tonga supporting, but also including the support to the Tonga Rugby Union's team, Ikaletahi, and also our netball team, Tala. By Fernando Bola for Radio and Television Tonga News. More than 5,000 passengers have arrived in Tonga since July 2020 on repatriation flights, according to the CEO of the Ministry of Medic, Paula Mao, and Vaifono Dubola with more on this story. There are three repatriation flights to arrive on June the 29th and 30th, with more than 500 passengers, which includes a repatriation flight from Australia, New Zealand and Fiji. 
Meanwhile, four repatriation flights are also scheduled for July the 7th, July the 14th, July the 21st, and July the 28th. The CEO of the Ministry of Medic, Paula Mark, says there were three repatriation flights arrived last week, which stranded passengers, including frontliners, government officials, experts, students, and seasonal workers from Australia and New Zealand. 90 passengers from Australia, while 274 from New Zealand and 27 from Fiji. All returning passengers must undergo five days of quarantine at the Noa International Dateline Hotel, the Kubesi Tonga Hotel and Makeke Camp. However, in a press conference last week, the Health Minister Dr. Sayapiu Kala says passengers to repatriate in July will reduce the days of quarantine from five days to three days. Vafanoto Bola for Radio and Television Tonga News. It is confirmed from the Herald News in New Zealand that the name of the 51-year-old Tongan man who died in a boat accident over the weekend is David Damayakiola. This was after police recovered his body from the water at Buglands Beach yesterday. The older son of the deceased, Salisio Moyaki, says he believes his dad avoided asking the other men for help because nobody would have survived if they tried to rescue him. He says his dad had urged his companions to save themselves while he swam back to their capsized boat, and that was the last word they heard from his dad. And the other two men made it to shore and were reported treated. Meanwhile, Salisio Moyakiola told Herald News his father was a hard-working and loving man, and he loved fishing. However, Davida was gone fishing with two other men, and when on the way back, the disaster struck in, which a big wave hit their boat and caused injury to his leg. Vaifanoto Bola for Radio and Television Tonga News. And today, Tuesday the 21st of June 2022, is recorded by Tonga Meteorological Office as the shortest day of the year or known as the June solstice. June the 21st and 22nd of December in every year is the shortest day of the year. Speaking to radio and television Tonga News, the Deputy Director of Tonga Meteorological Services, like the Fifita, says that sunrise today was at 17 minutes past 7 a.m. this morning and the sunset was at 7 minutes past 6 in the evening, which was only 10 hours and 50 minutes in daylight. There are underlying uh, key factors uh, that comes into play uh, when we talk about the length of the shortest and the longest uh, day uh, of the year. Uh, there are two types of uh, solstice, uh, which we all know, the June solstice and the December solstice. Uh, the June uh, solstice, uh, respectively where you are, um, in terms of the southern hemisphere, uh, where Tonga is located is our is our, is our day of our shortest um, daylight. Uh, this is basically due to the uh, the Earth uh, orbiting around the Sun and its um, angle of tilting of its axis of uh, rotation at around uh, 23.4 degrees. Uh, the axis of of tilting of the Earth uh, around uh, the Sun in our solar system. And today uh, is the marks the farthest or the furthest uh, point uh, in the Earth's uh, rotation uh, of the southern hemisphere uh, from the sun, uh, leading to our reduced uh, daylight hours uh, for today. Uh, please take note that also uh, today uh, in our southern hemisphere uh, marks the beginning uh, of winter. Uh, in our southern uh, hemisphere and on the other side of the world in the northern hemisphere is also uh, their summer uh, their summer solstice so in regards to uh, today being uh, the shortest day of the year here in the southern hemisphere uh, while it is uh, the longest day in the opposite uh, hemisphere in the north uh, this is basically due uh, to the hemispheres being nearer to the sun and being far away uh, from the sun in terms of uh, the daylight and receiving the sun's ray uh, for today. Most of today was cloudy and the distributing of sun energy was very low according to the earth due to, to the sun. And that concludes tonight's English news package. But before we part, here's a one final look at tonight's top stories. 
gas prices predicted to keep increasing in the future. Tongan community in New Zealand believes parents should spend more time with their children to prevent them from joining gang members. And the Tonga Meteorological recorded today is the shortest day of the year. And that's it for tonight. Thank you for your company. I'm Alice Ibukbo. Have a blessed evening.